It's no secret that not everyone that pursues software engineering actually ends up getting a job. It can be hard to stand out as an aspiring techie, especially when you're competing with people that have been coding since they were 12 years old. Oh, come on! But it's not impossible. In fact, there's a step-by-step -step process that you can use to get ahead of 99% of software engineers. The first quarter or the first three months of your learning process should be comprised of learning a language in the right way. Pick one language and stick with it by choosing a course book, and practicing a few problems every single day. It won't be easy, but taking an extra one to two hours out of your day will make a huge difference, especially if you show up every single day. So be consistent. It's really important to deliberately learn by being extremely organized. A lot of people start their learning process from the beginning, but for you, you should start at the end and work backwards. If you have a three month goal of learning a language, mark your calendar accordingly and work backwards from there. Mark your calendar when you want to learn about data structures, when you want to learn about exception handling and anything else that you're planning on doing. If you want to know how to actually plan out those three months of learning a language, I actually created a video on that so you can click here. I've also linked some examples of courses and books that you can actually use in the description below. During the first three months, you'll also want to take notes and keep the programs that you've written. Don't just practice these problems and forget about them the next day. Organize your desktop so that you store practice problems from different modules and then quiz yourself after every 10 chapters. It's almost like self-regulating to be both the teacher and the student. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that's holding yourself accountable for being successful. So the next quarter has a bit of an overlap with quarter one. The second quarter is months three to six. In this quarter, you're going to want to find a friend. I can't emphasize how much easier it is to learn when you're collaborating with someone else, especially when that someone else is on the same level as you. Not only are you able to confirm theories and share ideas, but you're also getting real life practice on working with a team member. It helps to start your course from quarter one with this person as well and discuss any practice problems that you're stuck on. Try to meet with this person once a week at minimum so you can try to hold each other accountable to actually finish the problem and the courses. If you can't find someone to do that with you, you can actually join my Discord server. I have quite a few aspiring software engineers on there and they're always willing to help each other out. So that's also linked in the description below. Feel free to join at any time. This is the quarter that you'll also want to start learning data structures and algorithms. Finding a friend during the stage is even more vital. Take a data structures and algorithms course with this person and practice the problems every single day. I've linked a course in the description below. Start with relearning arrays, lists, and then you can graduate to trees, graphs, recursion, and the dreaded BFS and DFS. Once you start taking this course, you'll also need to follow along by doing the subsequent practice problems in LeetCode. It's pretty easy to find the right LeetCode problems that fit with the module that you're learning. Just search for the right data structure and algorithm and then filter by difficulty. I'd start by doing only easy problems. You can always advance to the more intermediate and difficult problems after you've started the interviewing process or as you're prepping for the interview process. So now we're moving on to the quarter three. Quarter three is months six to nine. Once you finish the data structures and algorithms with this person, try using Git and GitHub to build a project with them. A, you're getting practice building a project and B, you're also learning to use version control and implement software with another member of your team. But before you do this, you want to take a step back and organize the planning process. I've seen so many engineers that just get started with a project and do the bare minimum when it comes to planning. They basically just make things up as they go along and that never ends up working. They're not being intentional about the design patterns that they're using or the types of data structures that they implement for better performance. They don't even really take into consideration what the business wants. Rather, they think that it's more fun to build things this way. That being said, try to build an app that actually helps someone. Go out into the world and interview your teacher, your friends, your mentor, anyone that has a problem that you can solve. And then meet with them every single week to get feedback on the progress that you're working on so that you can always reorient yourself to what the customer wants. So basically, you're building something for someone Someone with someone. Make sure you're also having meetings with the person that you're collaborating with so that you're both aligned with the work that's being done and so that you're not overlapping any work either. Make sure you're using a planning tool such as Notion or Jira. They're both linked in the description. And again, work backwards. Do your research ahead of time to figure out which components are needed to make your project work. Document everything and start planning a few months in advance. And like I said, I can't reiterate this more, but try to meet with your teammate every single day or at least every single week, just like a daily stand up. This is something that I was never good at, so I had to make a deliberate effort to start organizing my time in a way that actually benefited both me and my team. All right, so now we're moving into the fourth quarter. You're on the last stretch of the year, months nine to 12. This is where you should start learning more about infrastructure and DevOps. So coding isn't everything. 
What? Okay, so it's a given that you're gonna have to learn code to some extent, but you'll mostly learn this in school or you'll end up taking an online course or even going through the details in quarter one that I mentioned before. But what about learning about containerization, HTTP protocol, design patterns, and often environment-based configuration? What just happened? Well, if these words are foreign to you, that's okay. You've come to the right place. Most aspiring software engineers assume that if they learn to code, that they'll easily get a job. And while that may be true to some extent, if you want to work at larger companies, you have to prove that you're capable of working with enterprise software. At work, you'll probably spend 10% of your time documenting, 10% of your time planning out a user story, 30% of your time attending meetings, 15% of your time researching design patterns and implementation processes, aka Googling, which leaves 35% percent of your time to actually code. And that number is even smaller if you're a new employee because you need to spend more time reading through your team's repositories. Learning the entire ecosystem of software development is really important. You can certainly learn it on the job, but if you're a new grad who can write code to connect to ChatGPT or Instagram and upload your app so that others can use it, then employers know that you know how to build an API, send an HTTP request, and even process information from an external API. Not only that, but you've figured out how to containerize your application and deploy it to the internet. Integrating your work into others' work is really valuable, and it'll definitely help you get ahead of most aspiring software engineers. Build off of your project that you or you and your friend have created in quarter three. Implement these new concepts into a project and even add comprehensive documentation on how you're running your application using Docker, how to change any config files, or even just the general design behind your application. Once you've done most of these things, you've already done what most aspiring software engineers won't do. All of this takes time and effort. It demands a lot more attention to detail and showmanship when it comes to displaying your work, but it is well worth it because you're on your way to standing out as a software engineer. So why don't you go start coding?